Eric, have you seen the nipples? No. <coughs> Whoa. Sorry. Norm from the PlumbingAcademy.com live. Uh, Eric and I were doing some work. I was just looking through the fittings. We needed some nipples. I... So, and we'll talk about nipples next week. Um, here we are. We're here to go through. It's Thursday again. We're going to talk about the uh, free sample test. I think tonight again is the free sample, free sample waste and drainage fitting, waste and drainage design, part three. So I'm going to get away from all these fittings and looking for nipples and head over to the classroom and I'll meet you there in like three seconds. I'll run. So here we go. And here we are in the classroom. I'm Norm again. Here's the website, theplumbingacademy.com live, uh, the, www.theplumbingacademy.com. This is the home page you see. And again, we go to the home page. We have this practice testing button up here. Oops, I'll get rid of that for a second. And then you can either move the screen or... You can just click on there over there and it'll bring up to our practice testing page. Look at that, the circle in the perfect spot. I'll get rid of that really quick. And here we have down here is our practice testing page. As we click on to here, practice testing, practice testing. Oh, making a mark. I'm going to put the pen down. And here is, um, here we go with page two. Just click here and it'll bring out, bring you up to the free sample test in any of our questions, which right today we have them right here. We'll get rid of that for a second for you. And this is our sample question for today, which again is part three of um, sanitary drainage and waste sizing, venting, all that kind of good stuff, fixture units. For those of you who may not be related to plumbing and you or you're not in the plumbing field and you just want to learn some of the things, maybe you're considering a career in the trades and in the plumbing field, we encourage you to get into the trades. It's just awesome, awesome. You can make a lot of money, a lot of skill, a lot of creativity involved. Um, I've been in the plumbing field and a plumber since shoot the uh, late 70s which ages me but I look good I look good for being as old as I am <laughs> but here we are we're going to talk about today plumbing installations and plumbing installations can be again divided into three distinct yet related stages of install underground rough in where they actually dig under the ground if you have to underneath a slab then we have above ground rough in or what some people call top out or stack out. We run the pipes and you, you install them in the building and top out stack out means you're going through the roof of the building. And then we have finish where now you're putting in toilets and sinks and all the finished trim that goes along with the plumbing fixtures you see in some of these great buildings they're building and people's homes and beautiful complexes that go up now. Today we're going to talk about, again, right, and we have a given, so we're talking about refer to the drawing below, and the question today is, what answer below should be considered most correct to complete the following code waste inventing related statement? So what's going to be most correct? So as we go into the question, and you know what I'm going to try and do? I'm going to pick up the black pen, and I'm going to try and give you a little bit of color here. And we're going to talk about in Massachusetts and other jurisdictions, what is the minimum size of the vent serving the lavatory on the first floor? So what we're going to do is, and I just lost part of the screen, and that's okay. So here's the figure that we're looking at today. And we're talking about the size of the lavatory on the first floor. So in this case, hopefully we're still circling with blue. And maybe we'll change it to, I'll give you another color here. Let's go to like orange. Uh, we'll get rid of that for a second and move this over here. So in the orange, I'm gonna, this is all, this is gonna be a trap for a tub or a shower on the first floor. This over here, the, uh, this orange circle over here, we're gonna draw the arrow to it. That represents a kitchen sink with a dandy clean out on the branch in this case. 
And then right here, that would be a water closet. So a water closet, a toilet, all these symbols mean something. If you're in the plumbing trades, you may be used to that. You may be used to those symbols. For some of you who are new apprentices or interested in the trade, it's not complicated. You learn this stuff. You, you get used to it. It becomes part of who you are as you go through and you learn and you see these drawings over and over again. And architectural drawings, they'll mark them. And building drawings, they'll, they'll identify them. Um, but today we're going to talk about, again, in the blue on this first floor, the circle right here with the orange arrow is the lavatory on the first floor. Now, for those of you who have been in the trade, maybe have a little bit of experience, you're going to be able to tell that all the fixtures on the first floor are what we call individually vented. So every fixture you see on the first floor, which again, first floor is here, second floor is here, third floor is there, are individually vented. And in each, in each case in this building, each floor is a different venting design. But we're going to focus on the first floor today, and we're going to be looking at the vent, and this would be the vent portion of the lavatory on the first floor. So we're not talking about this run here, we're just talking about what you see circled, I'll erase it and circle it again, this portion of the vent above the flood level rim of the sink on the first floor. And in most, whether it's the Uniform Plumbing Code, which is the UPC, the International Plumbing Code, which is the IPC, the um, Plumbing and Heating and Cooling Contractors Plumbing Code, or any of the model codes or custom codes, and in Massachusetts, where we are actually broadcasting, is a custom code called 248CMR, code, it's Code of Massachusetts Regulation. It's not Commonwealth of Massachusetts Regulation. It's a code of Massachusetts regulation. It's a custom code that was actually built off the uniform plumbing code back in the mid-60s. That's true for any of you that didn't know that and you're in Massachusetts. That's actually where that, that, the Massachusetts code was foundation years ago. I think it was 1966. In all those codes uh, from the very beginning, the minimum size of a vent is typically half the size of the drain it serves. So when we could talk about the water closet, the, the shower drain, we could talk about the, la in this case, we're going to talk about the lavatory. And in this case, in, in the particular the case of Massachusetts, and I believe in New Hampshire and many of the, many of the states throughout the U.S., the minimum size of that vent would be inch and a quarter. That's not a lot of math and not a lot of figuring to do. There's kind of no fixture units involved, drainage fixture units, which some of the code language speaks about. It's just a straightforward, what is the minimum size of a vent? And in this case, what is the minimum size of the vent on the lavatory on the first floor? Mainly because the lavatory on the first floor, the drain could be inch and a half, they're half the size of the drain it serves, but no less than, no less than inch and a quarter. That's all we have today for the sample plumbing test. Next week, I promise you, we will talk about <laughs> nipples. And in the future weeks, we're going to talk about even cocks, different type of cocks that people are used to. Eric's holding his head. But again, like us on Facebook, share us on Facebook, and we will see you next week at www.theplumbingacademy.com. Eric's going to pull up that screen.